พิสุวิสกูดับเพลงพิสุวิสของเขาสักเช่นเดี๋ยวเราไปเจอเขา Let us once again turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Read. Now repeat that the Feast of Weeks exhibits many lessons of great benefits to each of us in the Israel and the nation of Yahweh. Some instances we see the pieces for laughter. But that's not all it is for. Those who will only settle for a feast for laughter are incomplete. They have a limited understanding of how the Bible is written. They do not know that the Bible is written figuratively and literally, prose and poetry, metaphors and similes, they don't know that it's written symbolically and prophetically, nor allegorically. And they're unable to distinguish the difference when you talk about it. But even this verse can be looked at ten different ways. And I'm directing your attention away from laughter to the seriousness of the wealth contained in this scripture. Let's go to Psalms uh, 104, verse 14. Here we see that Yahweh is the causer. I said, Yahweh is the causer. The only way you can have a feast is that you understand Yahweh is the cause. Otherwise, you'll take the feast for granted and that it is a time for laughter only. Here I see a serious consideration that since it is Yahweh that causes the grass to grow, then he's the causer of all things that grow, including wealth. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8, 18 and see. Isn't it beautiful to see that everything I speak is in the book? And it taught us to look at it. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Read. But God shall remember the Lord of for it is he that gives the king power to give wealth. Uh-huh. That he may do what? The message to the government, which he swears unto our fathers, as it is this day. Right now, while you're listening to me, the covenant, the agreement of Yahweh is established. I'm here. I agree to come. I told Abraham, but after you had served 400 years, I will come. Not before 400 years, but after 400 years, I will come and judge the nation that you serve. So I've kept my establishment, my covenant, my agreement. I'm here this day. Now that I'm here, I'm establishing for the first time in your life, Feast of Weeks. And then you know that the same God that causes the grass to grow also is the one that gives you power of mind to get up. Say y'all. So when we are in accord with the cause of things to grow, Then we're talking about accumulating wealth. We're talking about accumulating money. We're 
We're talking about eliminating poverty of mind among our people who say silly things like, I don't want to be rich. I just want to know to get by. Why should we suffer for less when we can have the best and all the rest? Someone taught us to think foolishly. I don't want to be rich. I just want enough to get by. I don't want to get by. I want all the wealth on earth. All of them. Now you may not know all of it, but I do it. I'm looking for all of my children that want to submit to the will of Yahweh and have all of it. I don't want you to follow me if you don't want all of it. If you want to keep your poverty state of mind, Stay away from me. It's not that I'm afraid of you. It's not that I think your poverty will rub off on me because I came to you in object poverty anyway. I've told you I know the poverty. I know all about your poverty state of mind. And your poverty way of thinking. Your poverty stricken mind. I come in your midst to change it and take you from wanting to get by to wanting all that's coming to you. See, you were the good man. I want all of it. And you my joint heir. You're a co-heir with Christ. So how could you want less than what he comes to get? I don't want to be heir with a man that wants nothing. What will I have? Nothing. What value will it be for me to share and it happens with a man that has nothing. <laughs> These weeks is about the accumulation of wealth. Then you have a lot to laugh about. You can be merry or hot when you got plenty of money. Me. 
it is my pleasure to give you the key. It's not such a I'm not threatened by your getting rich. I'm in trouble long as you fall. <laughs> See, I look like you. As long as they say niggas no good, and I look just like you, though I'm good, people will be saying I'm no good too. So to make sure everybody understands that I'm different from you, I'm just different. Just <laughs> like God. So you need power of mind to overcome that condition. And since I have demonstrated that I have the power to get wealth, guess what? That's proof positive that I know how to give you that same power. Your blessing is that I am the elementary one. I'm altruistic. I get my joy out of giving. Now I have two conditions. All you have to meet is two conditions, two basic conditions. And I'll give you the power you see me demonstrate. First, believe in my name. And when you believe on my name, who name you believe in? My father Yahweh. That's number one. Two, receive me as the son, only the God's son of the Lord. And when you meet those conditions, then you'll listen to me. You will hear me. I can give you instructions to follow that will result in you having power of mind. Yep. It's incredible when you can come from under the control of others. <laughs> For others who exercise restraint upon your activity, that can be eliminated. You can have peace there. That's what I have come to do. I proved today by studying T that Yahweh is independent. The mind of Yahweh is independent. You cannot be a child of God with a dependent mind. Any more than in John chapter 8, can you be the seed of Abraham doing the work other than Abraham did? What identifies you as the seed of Abraham is when you do the works of Abraham. So what do you think identifies you as a child of the Most High? Is when your mind works like the Most High's mind? When your mind works contrary to the Most High, you have a satanic mind. You have a mind in opposition to the Creator, Yahweh. And even if you get rich as a devil, you shall soon be cut off like more rags. Feast of Weeks. Deal with your rejoicing over Yahweh accumulating great wealth for you. It's available. All you have to do is submit your will to the will of your Creator. Name Yahweh. Mm, mm, mm. Simple formula. Are you successful without Yahweh? Are you able to duplicate my work without Yahweh? You have it. You have to admit that I've done a good work. I have set a model of excellence for the world to look at. 
with the people who've never known excellence. I've established excellence with the people who were not striving to excel. I did it anyway. I have established wealth with the people who only want to get by. It's a miracle. I have established riches with the people who don't know how to get rich. And if I turn the riches that I have accumulated over to you, it will be quickly dissipated and you will be back into the condition of your poverty with your mind. You have to go through a mountain change in order to protect the wealth that I have accumulated for you. My job is incomplete until you can protect what I give to you. You cannot protect the wealth that I have accumulated for you. I have created this inheritance for you. But my job is incomplete until you can protect your inheritance for him. Feast of weeks leads to a straight day. Here it is in the Bible that I read all of my life. Set up in church under bishops and preachers and religious leaders all of my life. And they never showed me this scripture. <laughs> that it is Yahweh who gives the power to get done. Even if I had read it, they could not have translated this into wealth for me. How do I know? Because they have not. Isn't it amazing that I have taken a handful of people and created wealth and the Pope has 800 million and they're living in poverty? So the wrong, but the wrong one. I mean, can you imagine, just try to imagine what I can do with 800 million dollars. With what I've demonstrated with a handful. Check it out. You try to tell, calculate that for me. I have the richest mind in the universe and outside the universe. No mind is richer than mine. But my mind is the mind of Yahweh, the creator. No one can see that. Material things of the earth does not make me rich because it's from my riches that I made the material things of the earth. <laughs> the earth and all its material existence is but a result of the riches from within my mind. And when I share my riches with all the people of the earth, it does not diminish my wealth. I don't care what you take from the earth and form it into. When you are finished, you have to leave it right here where I'm in. But yet I retain the wealth of my desire. to come back to the creator, the originator. That's what that proves. You can't take it. You have to leave it. You, have to, you thought you left it to your children? No. Child's a fool. <laughs> when you study the matter, you're leaving it in the hands of the one that created you. Whether you like it or not. Come on. It was here before you were born. And if you think you're important, ask your mama 
did the sun get brighter when you were born? <laughs> no? Did the sun shine brighter when I was born? Did it have a greater intensity? <laughs> Check the earth out and see when everybody dies, does the sun get them? <laughs> You don't affect Yahweh, but Yahweh affects you. So a wise person will get in tune with the one that can call his condition to change. From poverty to riches. Feast of weeks. Celebration.